Hi, good morning, my planty family. How are you? Hopefully everything is well with you. Um, it's been raining a lot here in Puerto Rico. I don't know if you've noticed, we have a lot of um, waves out there still. Beginning of November, incredible enough. Hopefully everything is well. Um, uh, if you are new here to this channel, my nickname is Nina. And if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate every single one of you. You're all welcome. Um, first of all, before I get into um, what we're going to see the video for, <laughs> I'd like to, uh, you know, just to let you know uh, that we should all keep Spain in our prayers. <laughs> we are going through a lot right now. Uh, we, I have several subscribers that are from Spain and I have not been able to get in contact with them. Um, it has been raining so much in the region of Valencia and uh, it uh, caused severe flooding. So yeah, just to let you know that if you are watching that you are in my prayers and uh, hopefully you can get out of that situation fast and rebuild and yeah, wish you, wish you the best to recover as soon as possible. So let's get into um, what we're here for, the Monsteras, my collection of Monsteras. I don't have many, but I do uh, like this genus a lot. Um, and so we're gonna go over every single one and their specific uh, care tips and uh, see how we can better them. Um, some are so-so, some I had to cut back. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know when, when we get to those. But first I wanna let you know a little bit more about the Monsteras. What, what are Monsteras? Why are they named the way they are? Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get, some into, get into some information for the Monsteras. So first of all, it's got more than 60 named species within the gen genus of Monsteras. They are from the tropical region of the Americas, native to there, to that area. And um, they are, it's called Monstera because of the fenestrations and the holes in the leaves, basically meaning uh, mon monstrous or abnormal in Latin. Um, as you can see in the back, uh, we ha I have the medium-sized Monstera Deliciosa. And that one, I'm just letting it just fall down. I'm not even trellising it or um, putting it up on a pole. I like the way it just kind of naturally falls. I mean, it is an ep it's not an epiphyte. I was gonna say it is an epiphyte, but it's not an epiphyte. Why? Because the roots go up the trees and go down in the soil. So they are called hemipiphytes. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm going to write it down here. But basically, they go both ways. Very strange, but true. Um, so, yeah, that's why they are that, called that way. Now, some of these uh, monsteras are, um, have the inflorescence um, that once it matures, once it ripens and it changes color, it is edible. Um, it cannot be eaten while it is green, it is toxic. But once it is ripened, it is the same. I have not tasted it and I have not smelled one. But they say it smells and tastes like pineapple, peaches, or pears. Um, it, interesting, but if it's deliciosa, it means it's delicious. So I guess I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'll, tell, uh, I'll take the word for it that, that it is good. Uh, once I, I know it, it'll come out, it'll, flowers usually come out once the plant is mature and you know, we'll, we'll see about that. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but hopefully soon I'm kind of interested in taste one of those. Um, they are herbs and they are in evergreen vines also. So it's kind of strange, right? <laughs> but yeah, they can grow up to 20 meters tall, some of these uh, species. Um, I've seen some here in Puerto Rico and they grow, they grow 
very tall, very tall. Um, so basically, if you're going to have it indoors, control, control the growth. They do take up space. As you can see, this one takes up from here to here. And this is just a medium-sized one. The one that I have downstairs is that Gigantium, and uh, I'm letting it down. I'm, I'm going to keep it downstairs. <laughs> it's like, no way. I, you can, I don't think I can handle that one up here. Um, let me tell you a little bit more. The leaves are alternate and they're leathery and they're dark green, basically. And they, of course, they have the variegated ones that are beautiful. And I'll show you some of those also. The reason the, uh, the Deliciosa has fenestrations and most of these monsteras have fenestrations is that in nature, they allow the light to go through the fenestrations to get down to the bottom leaves. Interestingly enough, it's just nature. I mean, how awesome is that? Um, incredible. And uh, yeah, so one fact that I was really um, shocked about is that um, if you take care of your monstera, I, I believe it's a deliciosa or maybe some other species within there, they can go up, they can grow up to 40 years old. I mean, come on, almost the, the length of a average, I guess. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but 40 years old is a long time. Um, so yeah, take care of your monsters and you got it. I do want to let you know the pests. This, this type of plant, you need to be on top of it once in a while, not to give up on checking up on the pests. They get everything. Um, they get spider mites, they get uh, mealybugs, they get thrips. I mean, you have to be on top of it. And if you give it like a, a preventive maintenance, pest preventive maintenance like I do biannually, um, I did give this one the, the DIY uh, pest treatment like two weeks ago. Not even a budge of, of bothering it. Um, there are some leaves in some plants that yes, they do fall off after the treatment. But I mean, think about it. What would you rather have? Some leaves fall out or have a pest in controllable condition here? <laughs> um, you know, wide, widespread pest problem. I mean, think about it. You have to, it's kind of cost effective. What, what is better? Pros, cons, you think about it. Okay, so we're, now we're gonna go into the video and I'll show you my collection of Monsteras. So let's get to it. Let's get into the plants. Um, I'm not sure which one to go. I, I don't know whether I should go for best to worst or, you know what? I'm just gonna go with what comes out. <laughs> the Celta Pecana. This one, uh, I had to retrellis it because it was all over the place. It was just, <laughs> it's like you're such a fast grower oh it's like you know i had to cut it back and retrellis it that's why the leaves are going in, out in different directions well let me tell you a little bit more about this plant um i have notes on every single one of them so bear with me <laughs> the first one is this one is native to south mexico and central america it is a viney plant, as we can see here, which I trellised up on a moss pole. And as it matures, it develops holes in the leaves. I think, um, that, I, this is one of the longest leaves here. I'd say like the one, two, three, like four inches, maybe five inches long. This is a fast grower. Oh, and this one too, very long. I mean, compared 
to the other ones, right? There's the longest ones that I have in this one. Immature foliage has distinctive silver veination. That's how you can tell that it is a Silta Pecana. This one's a mature, more mature, and then the silvery veination has disappeared basically. So yeah, it's a nice one. You can have it hanging, you can get, get it up a pole, but um, yeah, it is a fast grower. Okay, my next one is the Adonsoniae. Uh, this one is not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, I like it a lot, but uh, yeah, it has its moments. It can be a diva also. <laughs> Let me tell you a, a little bit more about this one. This is also called a Swiss cheese plant because of the holes. And it is also called a five leaf, five hole plant now i'm not sure i guess that they they this one has four this one has three i guess the when it becomes mature this one has five um i guess it could grow see this one's a little bit bigger and this one has five holes maybe that's just a, a way that we can detect what is uh an adansonii And I do have this one in pond. And it's growing very nicely compared to how I had it before that it was in um, mix, soil mix, and it was drying out too much. I did give it a pest treatment since it had a little bit of mealybugs, but it is doing good and none of the leaves fell off. This one's widespread across South and Central America. Okay. And it likes to be in a hot and high humidity area. So yeah, it does like humidity and warmth. There's four different subspecies of this plant. So you will see uh, very, you know, different types of um, variation within the Adansonii. They are heart-shaped leaves with thick, waxy texture and contains oval-shaped perforations. So the perforations are oval to the most extent. This is a perfect oval almost right there. And this one can grow to be three to five feet tall as a house plant and up to 13 feet in the outdoors as a vine. And it likes bright indirect light. It is currently in the south facing window, but it does not receive direct sunlight, but high illumination. And it does like well-draining soil. If you have it in semi-hydro, that is my recommendation and my experience. I did have it in uh, soil and it did not prosper the way this one has in semi-hydro pond. So yeah, and I do have it in a heart-shaped trellis that I did with galvanized wire. <laughs> So that's how this one has grown better for me. Another Swiss cheese that I have is this one. This one is the Monstera Esqueleto. This one, as you can see, the holes are not oval. They're more like dragged. They have more uh, holes in them, I believe. Maybe that's how you can different, differentiate them. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the Escaleto. They have huge fenestrated leaves up to three feet long. These leaves can grow very, very long. I mean, for being this type of leaf, right? 
uh, rare but easy to care for indoors. This one I also have in pond. Uh, both of these Swiss cheese uh, plants have grown very well in semi-hydro for me. Um, the soil, I didn't have that much luck. I don't know why, but they, all, but they both like high humidity and warm temperatures. These are native to South America. Can you imagine this uh, variegated? Oh, wow. It'd be amazing. Uh, the only thing I can highly let you know is that these are very important to know. They are toxic to people and to pets. So you got to be very, very careful where you place these. Uh, make sure that the, your pets do not chew on these. Uh, so, yeah, just be forewarned. Um, they do like partial sun exposure, bright indirect light. They can grow six or more feet tall indoors and four feet wide. So to imagine six feet tall, good grief, they can really grow, huh? Oh, I'm, t uh, I'm thinking about the leaves, no. These can grow, the vines can grow up to six feet tall and four feet wide. Are they talking about the leaves? I don't know. Well, uh, soil to be moist, but well draining. And like I say, I do have it in semi-hydro. So the water is right there. This level right here. And this is in my DIY uh, pond mix. Um, the direct sun can lead to leaf scorching, so um, try not to get direct sunlight on them. They need warm with above average humidity above 60%. So yeah, if you can get it above 60% on the humidity, you should not have any problem with crisping on the leaves. The rule of thumb, underwater is better than overwatering on this plant since it is susceptible, susceptible, since it is susceptible, since it is susceptible, yes, to root rot. <laughs> so, um, like I say, I don't want, I don't fill up the water over here into the top. I just leave it right on the bottom part where it can obtain the moisture that it needs but on the top, it will remain dry. Uh, if temperatures drop, stop the liquid fertilizer and only fertilize in spring or summer to propagate this plant right here. You get a stem cutting with three to five nodes and place uh, one or two nodes within water container Make sure you change the water weekly. Make sure it doesn't have any, so it, can, it does not promote root rot. And they do pretty well in propagating. But yeah, see the length, see the, the holes are longer. So yeah, that is the Monstera Escalero. The next one that I have is this monstrous one. <laughs> As you can guess, if you haven't guessed already, it's all the name. This is the Monstera Peru. I've had this for a while, I think like two years now, I think. And I love this plant. Um, it is just something else. I do have it on a moss pole so you can see it. And let me tell you a little bit more about the Peru. This one is a very popular plant. Uh, you can get it in most of the big box stores. Uh, that's where I got this one at Home Depot. And like I say, it's been with me for two years. It is a very, very vining plant. <laughs> um, the leaves have grown. Um, 
as you can tell this one's i think this one's the largest leaf right here um this one needs bright indirect light like i said it's one of the most popular plants um i love it um it is like a leathery leaf and a deep green and uh it has ridges it looks a lot like the um luxuriant ethereum but more economical so if you like this style this is the easy go-to i love this plant it's beautiful and i can imagine how it would be variegated oh just beautiful um this one does require well draining soil it is an aeroid mix and it likes it slightly acidic soil so if you're into the ph on soils you know that this one does like acidic soils it is heavy so i'm kind of leaning it on the table here <laughs> um one of the most popular of course most popular uh plants that that in the monstera and it is a climbing plant so in this one you can use trellis or you can use a pole in some cases they have it as a hanging plant but uh, yeah it will hang pretty pretty long so i i like it better in a moss pole style uh this one you need to be watered regularly but not over watered remember they are prone to root rock if you have overwatering. So in this one, I water on a weekly basis in my area because Puerto Rico is warm and it is still warm. We had one day of cool weather. I think it went down to 70s and yes, yeah, 70 or 60. And for that was great. And that was kind of cool for us. We had to wear a little bit of sweater and jacket <laughs> but you know that's just puerto rico but then it went back to warm weather again so um yeah just try not to overwater the plant um you can use a water meter if you prefer to see if your plant in your area is moist and if it is do not water let it dry at least at the top section let it dry out and then go ahead and water if it is dry but yeah i water i count i'm i'm sorry but i'm into numbers um i don't know whether you guys know this but i majored uh, in accounting and numbers is my number so when i water i count <laughs> uh, i usually for big plants i count up to 10 seconds worth of water and for smaller plants five seconds that's just my way of doing things i don't know if it works for you or how you water but yeah mine is counting well um it does not do not like to be root bound so the monsteras basically don't like to be root bound um you need to uh put them in a semi larger pot from what they're in um, not major, but yeah, if you see that it, it starts not growing or it's, it's stunted, uh, could be that it has its root bound in the area. They have large roots so, and make sure it has a, a drainage hole. Okay. Especially for these big ones, they need to be well drained and not keep it root bound. Okay. This is an unusual monstera that does not produce fenestrated leaves. Um, some do, some don't. So yeah, but this one will not. And basically it does not grow larger. The larger leaves are the older ones. And it's not like the, the opposite direction. So this one right here is not that big. This one is like one, two, three, like three inches long. The one on the bottom is like a six inch so there you go and i just retrellis this one also because it was all over the place and that's why the leaves are a little bit wonky and this one is native to guess where peru the region of peru that's why it's called monstera peru hence the name <laughs> but yeah it's a beautiful plant i really really do love it 
I love this plant. And one day on my wish list, I'm gonna get a variegated one. Well, let me talk about this one right here. This one is Monstera Deliciosa Green. It is too heavy for me to bring down, but you can see it. Um, let me see if I can bring this up a little bit. Didn't bring it up much. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is um, also called Split Leaf Philodendron. So if you hear it like that, it, they, yeah split leaf philodendron is native to south mexico and south to panama basically central america that area uh, can be invasive species in several islands like hawaii so that must be all over the place over there but uh, like I, I i try to keep this in a pot and not outside will produce fenestrations and loped leaves as they grow. Grows very tall in nature, but only two, three, two to three meters. But that, that can grow, then grow. And when it's indoors. So they can grow larger, of course, larger if it's outdoors, but indoors, um, due to the conditions, it can be a little bit less. The inflorescence is adorned with cream white spathe of uniform, velvety appearance covering like a hood. Flowers are self-pollinating. And the fruit, when ripe, is safe for humans. Edible fruit tastes like a combination of peach and pineapple and only eat when it is ripe. So yeah, um, it is an interesting fruit. Uh, but I am I'm willing to eat it when it is ripe. <laughs> so that's a little bit more about the common one that you see in big box stores uh, on the Monstera Deliciosa. This is like the medium sized one. Um, and it's been with me for at least two to three years. Um, and I love it. I love the, the way it looks and uh, with a contrast of the light behind it you can see the fenestrations and the holes so yeah uh, that one is in aeroid mix now we're going to go downstairs and i'm going to tell you a little bit more about the monstera deliciosa the giant monstera classic green this one does not have the inner fenestrations the holes but this one does. This was an older leaf. I trans I repotted it, and um, yeah, it's, it's it needs a little dusting. But it's been down here receiving a lot of wind also. But this is the new leaf, and as you can see, my hand, it is huge, and I did put this wooden stake behind it. It's been leaning on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. It grows one to two feet per year or one third inch every day. Now this one has been growing for me. It is potted, um, so it's not gonna get as large. And it can grow towering heights of 70 plus feet. This one is a vast, and tall grower if it is placed outside in the soil and let me tell you a little bit more about my uh, Thai constellation this was um, <laughs> this is a diva <laughs> actually it uh, rotted out on me the roots rotted and um, it was a hassle it was just cutting back and uh, the first one actually died totally. This is the second one. And what I did is I put it out here in the downstairs um, garden under the house where it is receiving a lot of illumination and uh, a lot of ventilation too. No direct sunlight. And um, 
yeah it's doing better it's doing better i just see this over here a little bit browning but that's to, ex to be expected i put it in the way the same way that um i received it which was in cocoa husk and um, then i just put some aeroid mix inside around it i put some uh, coconut fiber to top it off but apparently the birds must have taken it so yeah but it's doing very well i water it um approximately every two weeks two every two weeks it's been receiving a lot of heat a lot of humidity and uh, yeah it's doing good i mean it's, let me see which is the newest leaf. The newest leaf is this one. Look kind of yellowish, but it's alive. <laughs> it is a lab created variegation. Okay. It is it has small splatters of whitish creamish variegation. It looks like a constellation, hence the name. Um it is quite rare, highly sought cultivar of Monstera Deliciosa. And it takes several years to mature, approximately five years. Mine only has, I'd say like one year. So I still have four more to go with a lot of tender loving care. <laughs> uh, it is an, in, here's an interesting fact. Only 10% of all philodendron seeds will produce a Thai Con variety. That what that fact there kind of threw me off. I just didn't know that they were using philodendron seeds for this. Um, it is uh, a species from a monstera, but maybe they just use that type of seed to grow it in. I I don't know. Weird, huh? And this plant can reach six to fifteen feet tall or 1.8 to 4.5 meters and 4.5 feet wide or 1.2 to 1.5 meters wide. Um, it's a slower growth due to reduced chlorophyll in the variegation sections of the leaves. So there are a little bit of fun facts about the Thai constellation. Um, this plant, uh, this is my second one, um my first one rotted out like i said uh, i was devastated it was a smaller plant actually and this one i did get in lixian orchids a little bit larger therefore it was uh, more easy to to um, take care of uh, so far so good um, and um, yeah it's beautiful and it's growing and that's all that matters. Um, I was thinking about transferring it over to pond with LECA, like a semi-hydro. I've seen it in there and it grows very, very nicely and very big. Um, but I'm not too sure just yet. So and I don't know if I'm willing to take that step. So far, so good. I left it in the same soil that it was in. Uh, actually, it wasn't soil. It was uh, cocoa husks. And... Um, I added some aeroid mix um, and uh, yeah, and then I put some fiber coconut fiber on top to close it up and the birds just either it flew away or the birds took it which I'm not surprised um, I don't usually use moss poles I think the only moss poles that I do have are there for the siltipacana and for the Peru but yeah it it seems to grow well with some type of support some kind of steak i prefer wood steaks and uh yeah they're doing good um this other one is a wood steak with uh coconut fiber to have something to grab onto so when it feels firm when it feels secure yeah it's something good for them so yeah now we're gonna go into the unboxing of my wish list I was gonna say wish list players. Oh my goodness, I'm stuck on Hoyas. It's on my wish list, a Monstera um, genus, genus. So we'll see what, how those came out. I'm not gonna say anything and I'm just gonna let you see. So let's get to that one. Okay, I got the box from Green Escape. Unboxing. 
like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> we will see what we got. I can't believe this is such a big box for these two little no. Oh. Okay, it's actually bigger than what I thought. This is a Monstera Albo node. It's not super moist, but it's not dry. Mm. It looks um, rotted right there. Must have been too moist. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this off and this root, yeah, this one's rotted. I'm gonna cut part of this off and I'm gonna let it callous over. So I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to plant it. Save this node. Actually, we have a node there and we have a node here, a root here and a root here. It's variegated on one side and looking, let me see. Well, we've got the node here, an aerial bud. And we'll see what we can do with this. Okay, I chopped off the rotted root there and the stem, I cut it off with a clean cut on everything that was rotted. That one was the hollow end. Gonna open uh, the next one, the, uh, the, the second one that I ordered. Let's see how that comes out. Okay, this one's a smaller one. Okay, these are very delicate right now. This one, the root had rotted off. Okay, we can see it all black. Now here it looks like good growth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right there. This one calloused over, this one calloused over fine. This one calloused over, um, it's not too good. It's hollow actually. But I don't see any sign of rot on this side. So I'm going to cut this off, cut it off here, and then just let it callous over tomorrow. I see the variegation, yellow variegation of the Aurea here and here. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing and just let it, um, leave it alone. So tomorrow I will follow up on this one. Um, this one also, clean cut there and took off the rotted part of the root there. And now I'm just going to wait until tomorrow so then I can um, pot it up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I did it for, with much love for every single one of you. Um, if you did like the video, I invite you to give a thumbs up and, and a share, uh, share the video so others can learn a little bit more about this genus of Monsteras. And if you have not subscribed, I invite you to do so. Thank you so much and uh, activate the bell so you can receive notifications when I upload another video. If Spanish is your language or you understand better Spanish, then I invite you to go to my main channel, which is Nina Suculentas y Más. That is uh, the same video, kind of, almost, almost the same, and uh, yeah, Spanish speaking. So from Puerto Rico, I'm sending you my blessings. 
for you, your family, your pets, and your plants. Have a wonderful day. God bless you and see you for the next video. Bye. Thank you.